Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. Today's episode, we're gonna check out this, the Kamoa X1 Pro T. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And this video I've been looking forward to because Kamoa gave me a heads up about this X1 Pro T-Pump a little while ago and said they'd send me out one to do a review on. And uh, when they told me the specs and said that it's the same form factor as the X1, but this bad boy uses a stepper motor and a different head which is rated for continuous duty. So it's ideal for calcium reactors, automatic water changes, uh, sulfur denitrators, or even just a high precision dosing pump. And um, it got me pretty excited because uh, there's, a, there's a huge demand for these pumps on the market at the moment. And uh, some of them are falling short on the continuous dosing aspect. So um, I'm really keen to test this thing out and see just whether it's up to the job or not, because I know the Kamoa X1 dosing pumps, and um, don't get me wrong, they're an awesome little pump, very affordable, good controllability, really small form factor. You can link a few of them up together. They work really well, but I could not imagine running one as a continuous duty pump for a uh, calcium reactor or an automatic water change or something like that. So I'm really keen to see what's different about the X1 Pro and to put it through its paces and see if it's up to the task. So um, I guess we might as well jump into the unboxing and then um, I'll have a look. I've got an X1 here so we can crack them both open and have a look what the difference is. Then I'll give this bad boy a bit of a torture test and uh, finally we'll sum up and see what I think of it. So let's get into it. All right, let's rip this box open. As you see, it's not a massive box, but it uh, does say that it's got remote control, not only for dosing, but also for calcium reactors. Some uh, different things, as you guess, you can guess the first thing you see is it is black, not white, like the X1. Um, I know they do a uh, X1 Pro, which is black, but this is the X1 Pro T, which um, I assume the T is for stepper. <laughs> I'm not sure, and it's got a few other features and bits and pieces here, but uh, let's rip her open and have a look. Oh, I should point out, you get uh, your uh, QR codes there, so you can uh, quickly get access to the app that you need to get this guy running. We've got the uh, instruction manuals, which I may actually read this time. We'll see how we go. We've got a uh, pretty hefty little power supply there. This guy is a uh, 12 volt, two amp. So it's, that's a, it's a decent power supply. It comes with obviously the Australian adapter. We get some nice soft tubing, excellent. We get the uh, little calibration uh, cylinder so that you can make sure it's dosing or, or running at the same speed that it says it is. We get a little uh, quality check thing. And of course, we get this baby little dosing pump. You can see it in my hand. What a tiny little unit it is. If this thing truly is capable of continuous duty and uh, pushing water a decent distance, it's gonna, um, it could really revolutionize the market. So I guess um, what I wanna do now is just grab the uh, X1 and we'll compare these two guys side by side. All right, so when you've got the X1 and the X1 Pro T next to each other, you can see they've got exactly the same form factor, same width, height, length. But of course, there is a little bit of a difference in the actual uh, dosing head. You can see the X1 Pro T on the left there. It's uh, got that gear drive and runs a much larger tubing. Plus, it's got the uh, screw down connectors. Nothing wrong with the X1 standard dosing pump, but it's obviously not made to push or pull water quite as far as this uh, gear driven one here. And uh, one thing that's difficult to show on video other than getting out the scales is the actual weight difference between the two. You can see the X1 here comes in at about 194 grams and the X1 Pro T comes in a fair bit heavier at 317 grams. Now I'm assuming that's because of the stepper motor, but um, let's rip them open and have a look. So when we open up the standard X1, you can see we've got a uh, standard sort of DC motor in there and a small little controller, which I assume does the uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You've also got the power uh, through, so you can daisy chain these together. When we open up the X1 Pro T, you can have a look. We've got this gigantic stepper motor in there with the uh, gear drive. It actually just fits inside the uh, container there. And then because it is a stepper motor, it actually requires a fair bit larger uh, uh, control board. And I also notice it's got a little battery backup on there. So despite appearing like almost the same pump in black and white, there's some very, very distinct differences between these two dosing pumps. 
All right, I like to run uh, John Guest fittings on uh, any sort of continuous duty pump or automatic water change pump just because um, I don't necessarily like the soft hose. I find it's easy to uh, break down and kink and um, it's also difficult to run long runs of where the uh, solid quarter inch tube's much uh, hardier and also really easy to get um, adapters that you can put uh, T's or uh, taps or right angles, whatever you need. So I've used these uh, little barbed quarter inch stem adapters here. I know this was something that was asked a lot in the uh, Kamoa automatic water change post. So I thought I'd cover it very specifically here so you could all see. These little adapters do also come in the uh, Ecotec Versa packs. So um, that's where I've grabbed these two from and uh, you can see the hose is a nice tight fit over there. I actually warmed the uh, included hose up a little bit. I cut a short bit off so that I could push it over that and that's, um, you're not gonna need any sort of fitting on that. That is, that is tight, that's not coming off. The reason why I do that other than just screwing uh, John Guest straight onto here is because um, these are little compression fittings. Um, I'll take the screw off so you can see. They have this little uh, collar in here and uh, that's going to want to bite into something and uh, I just figure it's designed to use this soft tube. I'd rather have it bite into the soft tube that it's, that it's expecting and designed for and it just seems to uh, give you the best leak-free outcome. So that's what I've used. Um, I'm going to probably have to take this off camera now so I can get that over there uh, unless I'm lucky. It's a little bit fiddly. All right, so hopefully you can see that on camera there. Now I've got the soft tube over the inner bit. You then push that uh, collar right up on there. And then when this screws down, that's gonna tighten up on there and that'll give you a perfect tight leak free solution so that uh, you're not introducing any air or leaking or any of those things you don't wanna do. All right, then it's just a matter of plugging it in and uh, turning the power on. The unit should fire up and then uh, we'll jump into the app which is the Kamoa remote app. We'll let it search for a device. I'll click on the plus to add a new device. Scroll through the options until I see the uh, X Pro T, which is just there. Now it's gonna ask me if I'm connected to Wi-Fi. put in my password, which uh, thankfully the screen recording does not show on screen. Now it's telling you to make sure you hold that button down until the uh, blue light flashes intermittently, which I've now done. I can click on the button and we move to the next step. It tells me to go over into my Wi-Fi and select the Kamoa option there. So I'm just gonna jump in there. Wi-Fi, there it is. Let it select the Kamoa. We'll jump back into the app now that it's on that Wi-Fi. And uh, it tells you to switch back to your home Wi-Fi. Which it has done for me. Now we wait for the connection. Wow, okay, got to 10% and was finished, that's handy. I'm gonna bind that to our uh, Wi-Fi so we don't have to do that process next time. And now the uh, X Pro T shows up in my options. So we can now control that via here. It looks like we've got a manual option where I can just set it to dose 100 milliliters. This is obviously gonna be handy if you need to uh, calibrate the device. I must admit, I'm a little bit lazy. I don't tend to calibrate these things. Um, <laughs> probably should for the purpose of this review, but uh, I just get a bit of a visual for the water it's putting out. Let's have a look at what other options there are in the menu here. We can have a look, we can change the name of it to something that'll make more sense. You can see the firmware is up to date. It actually gives us a tube life. Um, so it's got a thousand hours in there and um, that's when you need to replace it. So I assume it'll give us some sort of notification when we need to change it, which is handy. All right, so we've got manual. We've also got continuity, which is probably where we wanna be. This is where we can set up our constant flow rate. So, uh, it's just saying, okay, yep, yeah, we're gonna set this to 20 mil a minute, no problem. And the pump starts running. All right, I'm gonna change the speed so you can see this at another speed. And then I'll actually show you the pump so you get an idea of uh, the sort of noise it makes uh, when operating. So let's uh, put in something like a 50 mil a minute. And let's hit start. Okay, let's show you the pump. All right, so I've got it running it continuously at 50 mil a minute. Apart from a tiny click, which will probably stop once it's actually got water in the tube. This thing is so, so quiet. Pretty cool. All right, let's try something a bit faster. We're gonna go for the peak speed setting of 350 mil a minute. I'll show you what the pump's like. And here we are at the peak, which is 350 mil a minute. It obviously makes a little more noise then, but uh, 350 mil a minute is a lot of water. I can't imagine anyone dosing that amount continuously. Um, it may be a uh, 
one-off sort of water change or dosing a value, but if uh, you're running this through a uh, calcium reactor or something like that that needs a continuous duty, I think this is uh, way overkill. You'd probably be more like the 50 mil uh, per minute sort of range. All right, so what I just want to quickly show you that there is the option to go to a plan, which allows you to use this as a standard dosing pump. Although, as I touched on, most people are probably going to use this in a continuous duty use case. So let's set it back to that and move on to the first test. All right, for the first test, I want to see how far this unit can push the water. So I've got a little tub of water here that I've connected up to the uh, inlet over here. It's coming in through the pump, back out, comes along this John Guest line, which actually goes up the wall here actually converts into a yellow hose, goes out through my uh, the hole in the wall for the air conditioning unit, and then uh, right along my entire fence line, we'll go see where that is out the back. Actually, what I should do first is plug this pump in. It's kind of tricky to do one-handed, but it's off and running now. Let's go see if the water makes it out the other end. There's my cat, living life. Just to give you an idea of how far that run is, there's the line there, and it runs all the way, all the way down there. Let's see if it makes it into my shed. All right, here's our line. Do we have water coming out? Oh, it's trying. Look at that, unbelievable. That's a long run. We're talking a good 20 meters on the flat plus up about two meters there. Impressive run. I think it's time to bring the pump up here and do the next test to see whether it can actually pull water up that far. All right, next test. I've grabbed that same line and I've put that back into that tub of water, connected that to the inlet of the pump here. I want to see if we can draw water up that far. So it's going to come up along the fence line about 20 meters and up about two meters. We'll then see if we can pump that out to uh, just this line here. Now, this will be quite a test because when I disconnected that line down the other end when this pump was there, there was a whole heap of back pressure because like I said, that's actually set up to be a gravity feed from my room, my fish room here, down to the uh, fish room in the house. So um, may take a second to purge, but let's get the power in it and see what happens which again is super tricky to do one-handed, but all right. So let's see, the pump's remembered its settings. Very good. I'll try and get it sitting in a spot so you can see it operating. That'll work. The advantage of having the clear tube on there is you can actually see once the water does make its way there. This may take a second. Like I said, it's a fairly long run and uh, it did pretty much purge that entire line out when I disconnected it, although we can already see a little bit of water making its way through. Obviously still a little bit of uh, moisture in the line. It's pulling it through though. Still getting a little bit of air in the line, but uh, it's getting there. All right, it did take a good four or five minutes, but it appears that line is all, still got one or two little bubbles coming through there. It appears that it's all but perched all the way through now. And uh, our pump is, um, it's bringing water through. Mighty impressive. Like I said, this is a long, long run. We're talking uh, 20 meters of piping, multiple connectors, up about two meters of head, and it's drawing the water that far. I'm not surprised it was able to push the water that far, but drawing it that far is a mighty testament. So uh, a big, big tick for the uh, Kamoa X1 Pro T. All right, the third and final step of this uh, torture test of the uh, Kamoa X1 Pro T is the continuous duty run. I want to leave this pump running for a good week or two because um, I need to know whether this dosing head here is going to get hot or wear out or uh, whether the stepper motor inside the controller is going to get hot or wear out. So I've set it up on a nice, just a nice steady sort of drip. I'll see if you can get a visual of it in there. Same sort of speed a lot of people would set their uh, calcium reactors at or a Kalkwasser reactor or something like that that's going to use the continuous duty aspect of this pump. So I've set that up there. I'm literally, it's just drawing water out of this container through the pump and then back into the container. I think there should be enough water in there to survive a uh, week or two without evaporating too much. Gonna just leave it there. I'll give it as long as I can. I know with the uh, 
with the uh, Kamoa Auto water change, I wanted to give it a month and I ended up chickening out about the uh, three week mark. But uh, we'll see if we can give this at least a week. I'll aim for two weeks um, until I get a bit of pressure to get the video out. So um, let's just let it run and I'll check back in with you guys in a couple of weeks. All right, guys, here we are. It has been 10 days. I've now caved. I know I was going to push for 14, but uh, I've made the 10 day mark and I just wanted to give you an update on how this pump is running so I can wrap this video up and get it out to you. As you can see, the unit is still operating nice and silently there. It's moving around. The pump head's doing its job. It's not hot at all. We're drawing the water in. We're uh, still, I mean, I haven't actually measured it, but that looks about the same drip rate as we had before, exactly what I'd recommend for a calcium reactor or calcos or, or even an automatic water change if you're going to continuously do it. The one thing I do want to point out, though, is that the uh, body, and I'm assuming it's from the stepper motor, is quite warm. Um, now, like, I can hold my hand on there. It's not going to burn me or anything like that. And it definitely doesn't feel like it's going to melt the plastic, but it was something I was a little bit worried about with the stepper motor. I know they tend to get hot in continuous use, and um, this one definitely is warm. I don't know if that's going to be a problem in, um, you know, three months, six months, 24 months, but uh, after 10 days use, I mean, it's probably not going to get any hotter than that, but it's definitely putting out a little bit of heat. All right, guys, there you have it. That's my hands-on review of this Kamoa X1 Pro T. Now, this pump is going on sale in Australia for $249. However, some select stores will have a promo for these running at $220. And, uh, at $220, I honestly think it's a heck of a pump. I'll go over some of the pros and cons with it, um, in my eyes at least anyway. We'll start off with the cons. Really the only thing I came across that um, made me a little concerned uh, really was the heat from the stepper motor. And uh, if I was looking to run this pump out as a continuous duty pump and I'm expecting it to last a long time, I personally would probably modify the casing. I'd probably cut a hole in the opening on the top and I'd put a little uh, heat sink or a decent size heat sink or even a little fan, but I think a little heat sink from a um, old CPU or something like that would do the trick really nicely. It just worries me the, uh, that it did get quite warm to touch in just over a week and I'd hate to think what's gonna happen um, six months down the line. I'm sure it's totally fine and I'm sure things are all good, but um, I know electronics live a lot longer when they're kept cool. So um, yeah, personally, I'd cut it open and pop a little heat sink on there. If you run in a hot climate, I definitely recommend it because it is quite warm here at the moment. That being said, if you're in a cooler climate or you're um, sitting this pump somewhere where it's not going to get overly hot, shouldn't be an issue. But uh, realistically, that was the only con I could come up with. When I look at the pros, the price is crazy. The controller, the, the app, I'm normally pretty tough on Kamoa's um, apps. I thought the, the app for the uh, X1 Pro with T was just so simple and straight to the point. 99% of people are gonna be using this pump as a continuous duty pump. You're not gonna dose chemicals with it. You'd buy the cheaper X1 for that or you'd have one of the X4s or something like that. You're realistically buying this pump if you want it to continually do calcium reactors, calquasas, uh, nitrate reactors, automatic water changes, things like that. And uh, the way you could just set the mill a minute uh, very quickly and easy was an absolute thumbs up from me. Other than that, I love the form factor of it. Such a small pump, you could fit this guy in anywhere. I was originally a little hesitant about the way that the um, inlet and outlet came off the side, but uh, once I dismantled the pump a little bit, I saw that you could actually change that to any direction if you really wanted to. And um, I don't know what else can I say, but this pump is dead quiet. And I mean dead quiet. I haven't really come across many other uh, peristaltic pumps this quiet, particularly for the mils per minute range. Um, it's very, very quiet. Even the 350 mil a minute at its peak, it's barely making an audible noise where most of the time when I would run it, I'd have it around somewhere between 50 and 100 mil a minute. This guy, it just runs without any noise whatsoever unless you've got your ear right next to it. Other than that, what can I say? It's affordable, it's got a good app. Um, it pushes and pulls water a very, very long way. It's quiet, huge win. I guess I'll sum my video up there. If you have any further comments, questions, feedback, or anything you want to know about the Kamoa X1 Pro T, feel free to pop it in the comment section down below. Um, I've got this unit for another, um, well, Kamoa haven't actually told me what I need to send it back to them, so I might be able to keep it, we'll see. But I've got it for at least another couple of weeks, so if you do have any questions about it at all, pop it in the comment section down below. I do plan on leaving it running in that uh, continuous duty scenario that I've got there for that time, just so I can see if it does generate any further heat issues. But um, 
Maybe it's just me being overly sensitive, I don't know. Other than that, guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And last but not least, if you're yet to, please consider subscribing to the channel. It costs no money whatsoever and uh, take two seconds of your time. So just click that little red button down in that corner. Otherwise, guys, till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.